Greetings CSers. This will be the last in our short series of advanced SSH communication tutorials. Uh, in this section we'll look at the SSH file system utility. It's useful for setting up access on your computer to remote machines and making it look like it's a local access uh, just within a standard folder of some sort. Now this presumes that you have already set up the first step where you have a password-free login. Uh, without it, it'll just be a little bit more trouble because you have to type your password in a bunch of times. Uh, and as a fallback, SCP is extremely useful. SSH file system is not available on all platforms. Out of the gate, you will probably have to install some special packages on Linux to get it to happen and probably go to considerably more trouble on Windows or Mac OS X uh, in order to make it happen. I'm told that it's possible in both those cases, particularly uh, Windows has the Windows subsystem for Linux, so that's definitely going to be uh, plausible. And Mac has something called Fuse, uh, Mac Fuse user space uh, file systems, uh, but having little experience doing the install on either of those, I can't comment on it. What I can say is that if you can get it set up, it provides a tremendous amount of convenience uh, to transfer files between two machines and is probably worth the trouble. Um, so the basic idea is that through an SSH connection, you will connect a directory on your own machine uh, that anything you put in that directory will be transferred to the remote machine uh, and anything that you would copy from that directory uh, will use the SSH uh, connection to transfer information from the remote machine to your current one. Uh, I'm going to do this in the terminal and some of the commands are summarized down over here. Uh, but I'll pull up my terminal over here uh, to sort of make this apparent. We'll start over here on the left side one. Uh, I'll SSH into a remote machine called Atlas uh, shortly. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is to actually create a directory. Uh, as per the uh, instructions there, I'll call this one Remote Atlas. Uh, and that's on account of the uh, directory is going to be connected to this remote machine called Atlas. Now, the mcdir command in Linux, uh, it just creates a new empty directory. So if I were to, for instance, uh, list it, uh, then there would be nothing in there. Uh, uh, the ssh file system command uh, works by leveraging an SSH connection uh, and then setting up that folder so it actually mirrors what is on this remote machine. Uh, it's listed down here and I'll type it in over here. This is the SSH file system, SSH uh, FS. If you just punch enter right now, um, you'll get sort of usage meshes. But if instead you say error command not found, then you're on a platform that doesn't have this installed yet. You'll probably have to go to some work uh, to get it installed. Uh, the arguments to this are the remote machine location they want to connect. This will be Kaufman at atlas. Uh, .csc labs .edu, with a colon, uh, and that colon signifies this is my home directory there. You could connect subdirectories as well. And where I want it connected is on my remote machine, uh, or on the, my local machine, in this directory called remote uh, atlas. Uh, get a little wrap around there, but uh, no matter. Now, I didn't get any prompt or anything there on account of setting up my SSH keys earlier. Uh, so this is a remote access uh, that doesn't need to authenticate with a type password because I have a secret key on my machine here. Uh, but if I listed what's in that remote atlas now, uh, I'll see a whole hell of a lot of stuff uh, in here. This is actually my home directory on atlas and its contents. Uh, so if I SSH into Atlas over here, I get a big message about uh, this is uh, CSC Labs property, um, usage to be monitored, and so forth. Uh, but if I do a listing just here in my home directory, uh, you'll see much of the same stuff up here. A 2021 directory, Android directory, uh, some old research stuff, etc. down here. Uh, so these two are exactly the same. Uh, the big difference is that over here, on the left-hand side, my shell is still on my local machine uh, called Val versus this shell is remotely logged into Atlas. Now, interestingly, I can edit things here. Uh, so for instance, uh, I could, oh, let's see, let's nano a file. Uh, this will be in my remote uh, Atlas over here. And I'll just call it some file uh, .txt. And I'll say uh, here is editing on my local machine that gets automatically transferred. Uh, I'll save that, wrote three lines, exit out, 
and then I can list uh, that that thing is there. Uh, indeed it is. Over here, if I jump uh, to this right-hand side terminal, which is on Atlas, uh, then you'll see this sum file actually shows up uh, and it is present. Uh, and if I cat out its contents, uh, sumfile.txt, uh, there it is. It's leveraging the SSH connection so that anything I put in that folder is automatically transferred over uh, to the remote machine. Uh, similarly so, uh, I can transfer things back. Uh, so for instance, in this CSI 2021 directory up here, I can access that through my local machine through that remote folder uh, by, for instance, listing, uh, let's see, remote atlas, uh, CSI 2021. Uh, there's a, you know, for instance, a hello.c program over there that I want to get over, or maybe my lab one code. Uh, I'll just use my local copy uh, recursively, this uh, lab01 code, uh, copy it into my home directory here. Uh, and this is looks like a local copy, it's just going through this folder, which the underlying operating system will issue a bunch of SSH uh, transfers uh, to move things around. Uh, and so now this uh, lab01 code, uh, it's got all my goodies in there. Uh, and over here, if I looked at its contents on the remote machine, uh, this will be CSI 2021 Lab01 code. Um, it's identical to that. Um, so this connection then is super useful on terminal work, but lest you think that's all it's good for, uh, you could, for instance, open these files up uh, within this uh, remote Atlas folder in VS Code. And VS Code would think, oh, this is just a normal file uh, folder on my machine. I'm editing it, but really all that action is happening on the remote machine. You have to be a little bit careful because if you open a terminal, this will still be a local terminal. You might have to SSH in that in that case, but tremendously useful. And since it's very low level, um, it's pretty reliable as compared to the remote editing capabilities that VS Code provides out of the gate. Uh, additionally, if I just open up uh, my file manager, this graphical one over here, uh, you'll see a couple things. Um, here's my home folder by listing, and down here is a normal old folder, uh, let's see, RRR here, Remote Atlas, yeah, that open up. It takes a second to open this because it's actually doing a bunch of SSH communications, uh, but here in my graphical layout, so like this thing's here, uh, so if, uh, you know, for instance, I want to transfer this uh, Android Studio script, which is on Atlas, uh, over to my present home directory, I can just you know, drag and drop, as it were, and that will transfer it over. And there's some signs as well that this is a little bit special because at a special spot over here in my left control bar, uh, it's listed in this special spot as a mounted directory uh, that is a remote in there. Uh, you just have to take a little bit of care that uh, the, you need to disconnect these two things at some point. You can do that by punching this little unmount button right here uh, to unmount it, or by issuing uh, the uh, command, uh, this is a little bit wonky, f user mount, uh, and then dash u to unmount something, and then this uh, remote atlas directory. Um, that will uh, get rid of it. You can see my graphical display uh, changed over over here. If I go back into this remote atlas, uh, the folder is empty, uh, very unequivocal there. Um, and if I listed that remote atlas uh, here, it's an empty directory as well because I've severed the connection to the remote machine there. This will wrap up any transfers that need to happen back and forth from this. I use this technique all of the time. Uh, for instance, to publish most of my uh, uh, course materials, I mount the web servers that the computer science department provides on this little www directory. Uh, and so there's a bunch of stuff in here that if I copy something into the folder and set the permissions correctly, uh, then I can access it uh, via the web, uh, which automates nicely with command line tools and so forth. You don't need to do any fancy GUI drag and drop, uh, just uh, run some shell commands to mount the directory and copy some stuff in there and voila, it's online. Uh, so to that end, uh, this SSH file system is worth a little bit of time and investment uh, to set up. Uh, some of the TAs indicated that they might be able to help with this on either Windows or Mac, uh, so hit them up for that as you would find a want to do so. Uh, that will conclude our discussion uh, of the uh, various advanced SSH features that you might find useful, and we'll attempt to expand upon this uh, as new things come up uh, that folks might find interesting. Take care all and happy hacking.